Persuadable. What's going on, everybody? Yeah, I'm trying this new video editing style. All right, and just because you see my face doesn't mean I'm gonna be any less appropriate. So it's kind of like you know going online and watching some of those videos and then trying to you know show your significant other all the new moves that you tried to learn. If you guys know what I'm talking about, and then you try it and then you look stupid as hell doing it. That's probably what's happening right now and i don't regret that inappropriate joke at all and at least you guys can deal with my awkward sense of humor and my awkward face at the same time what's going on everybody my name is persuadable we're going to talk about dead by daylight the top five teachables in regards to which killers i think that you should level up first now let's talk about my methodology within this all right so first before we talk about the methodology actually we should talk about how dead by daylight mobile is significantly different from dead by daylight pc and gaming console to my knowledge with the dead by daylight pc which is what i'm used to dead by daylight mobile you actually have to level up each individual character by themselves so what i mean by that is that on dead by daylight mobile you have to play each individual character in order to level them up. Whereas on Dead by Daylight PC, what you can do is you can take those blood points from one character, transfer them to another character's blood web, and essentially you can level up characters without even playing them. I think that that's always been a weakness of Dead by Daylight PC, in my opinion. So I'm kind of glad that Dead by Daylight Mobile is doing this. So, and kind of to wrap all that up you have to level each individual character if you want to take those perks and transfer them over if you don't know what i'm talking about in dead by daylight mobile when you get a character to a certain level you can take those perks and you can transfer them to other characters by random chance through leveling those characters up we call those teachable perks now when we try to quantify the characters in terms of one to five all right in terms of which killer you should level up faster you need to understand that that also means which characters are going to help you level up other characters a lot faster. So the way that I have used my methodology, now within science, when we talk about methodology, we also talk about limitations. So within this video, I will tell you this is how I did it. This is how I leveled up my characters and why I leveled up sequentially in this order. And you should know that my philosophy is to slow the game down before you worry about taking perks that help you kill survivors faster. What do you mean, Persuadable? Well, what I mean is that by you trying to invest in skills or perks that allow you to kill survivors faster, if you're not slowing the game down first, you're probably not going to be able to utilize those perks to their greatest potential. What does that mean? Well, let me give you an example. If you're going against bad survivors, it doesn't mean it doesn't matter if you have good perks that help you kill them faster because you're going to kill them anyways. If you go against good survivors because you don't have enough experience, even if you have good perks that will take down the pallet faster or reduce your pallet stun, you're probably not going to kill them any faster because those survivors know how to play tricks. So my whole premise, the methodology of this, is that if you want to level up killers, you should level up the killers that are going to give you some tracking ability, slowing the game down, and over time, you're going to get better at predicting these survivors getting better at killing these survivors and when you do so that's when you can invest in some of these perks that will help you kill them faster or get to them faster but if you don't know how to anti-loop if you don't how to moonwalk if you don't know how to play mind games none of those perks are going to help you against the best survivors and again against bad survivors you probably don't need those perks anyway so let's get into this and we'll talk about my limitations and some of the uh, perks that I didn't include and why they're still good perks and maybe they will work for you number one clown you should definitely level clown first for those who are unaware cannibal not in this game currently so we do not have barbecue and chili barbecue and chili is a great perk however it's not in this game and even if barbecue and chili is in this game i'd still prioritize clown before barbecue and chili clown has two good perks but there's one that in particular is the reason why i am suggesting that you level up clown first and that is pop goes the weasel pop goes the weasel is a phenomenal perk that gives you pressure in the 
early, mid, and late game potential where when you hook a survivor and you go to one of those generators, you can reduce that generator progress by 25%. It is super helpful. It'll allow you to slow the game down because even if you're a good killer, if you go against better survivors, you need to slow the game down. Generator rush is a very real thing. I would recommend you trying to get this clown leveled up as soon as possible, especially when you first start the game. He's going to be difficult to use, but in reality, if you're going against survivors who are still learning the game, that's the best time to try to level up Clown. Clown, actually, in my opinion, is way better on mobile than what he is on PC. The second uh, perk, now I wouldn't recommend level on Clown just for this perk, but it is a byproduct of trying to get to level 40 with Clown, is Bamboozle. Bamboozle is a good ability for you to block a window, which can really prevent that sort of anti-loop say shack it's a good ability and it's a byproduct of you being able to use clown so i think that the number one priority that i did to become a number one ranked killer not that phenomenal since there's so many great killers on dead by daylight mobile is to get pop goes the weasel it'll really allow you to slow that game down number two plague Plague is a very, very good hunter or killer, rather, in regards to unlocking these perks. There's two perks, Infectious Fright and Corrupted Intervention. Now, for those who don't know, Corrupted Intervention is really good at Tier 3, Tier 1 and 2. It's okay. It'll reduce the amount of time that somebody can get to one of those generators that's blocked off. First, I should back up and let you know what this perk does. This perk essentially blocks off X amount of generators so, so survivors can't immediately go to the first generator near them. It blocks off three to four generators and further that, that are furthest away from you, so if there are uh, survivors over there, they can't start the gen rush. It slows the game down. Now, there are some countermeasures to this that survivors can do. They can camp those generators because they know that you may not leave the generators that are currently open. In, uh, currently open. However, what they also can do is rush those generators that are open, and that's exactly where you are. Or they can lead you away from the open generators for their teammates to go and continue decoding. There's plenty of strategies, plenty of methods, but by slowing early game down and having Pop Goes the Weasel that can continuously slow the game down even further, it's a really, really good perk for you to use. And now Infectious Fright is a really good perk as well. However, you should know that it currently does not work on mobile it is a broken perk that they have to fix however it's one of those things where when you put somebody in a dying state survivors who are in close proximity will pretty much yell and have an aura bubble but the aura bubbles do not currently work on dead by daylight mobile so it's one of those perks that may be a top 10 perk but the real thing that i had to rush for is corrupted intervention number three now this may actually be a surprise for people which is totally fine I leveled up Ghost Phase first because Barbecue and Chili doesn't exist in mobile currently, and that's that's how it is. He hasn't been released yet. Now, Barbecue and Chili is a nice skill where when characters or survivors are, you know, a certain amount of meters away from the hook, when you hook somebody, that aura bubble pops up and you know where that survivor is. That doesn't exist. Now, in this game, you have to be very, very aggressive. You hook somebody, you move on. That's how you gain the most blood points. It's a little dichotomized. There's certain methods that you can do to slow that down in case you're having a bad match, but that's for a later video. So, because I don't have barbecue and chili, I decided to go for thrill and tremors. Thrill and tremors is a really nice perk where when you put somebody in a dying state and then you pick them up to go and put them towards a hook. When you do, the generators either, either turn white or red. Now, if the generators turn white, this little thing, the entity, pops over that generator and prevents any decoding for X amount of time. However, if the generator turns red, that's how I know that a survivor is over there. It's like a it's like a maladaptive version or rather adapted version of barbecue and chili. And in a way, it'll actually show you if somebody is close by that barbecue and chili wouldn't. I'm not trying to make the argument that this is better than barbecue and chili, but rather that thrill and tremors will allow you to continuously add pressure to the map. If somebody is decoding somebody when you pick up a survivor, you'll know exactly where they are. Now, there is a counter strategy to this where survivors, when you down a survivor, they'll get off the generator. But if they get off the generator, which means it doesn't highlight red and you don't know where they are, that means that that generator is now held off for a approximately 12 seconds depending on how long or rather how high you got this leveled up it's a great perk i love it and it tells me where i need to go next 
Number four, Legion. I really like Discordance on, on Dead by Daylight Mobile. A lot of players don't really know where to go, especially with Corrupted Intervention. It also works very well without Corrupted Intervention because a lot of survivors, when they see a generator, they just run right on top of it. For those who don't know, Discordance is leveled by the Legion. And Discordance is a perk where when two people decide to go on the same generator, it highlights yellow. You actually know exactly where you need to go as a killer. That works out early game, that works out mid game, that works out very well late game where when you see that a generator is popped yellow, you know that there are two survivors who are on top of it and you got to get there very, very fast. Number five, this will be the most controversial one and the reason being so is because it is number five and uh, there's a few variations of this, but I personally recommend save the best for last. I just talked about the importance of making sure that you have these killers who are leveled up in proximity to what is most important, what's most important to help you in regards to tracking and being able to slow the game down. Save the best for last is one of those skills that actually um, will help you kill the survivors a little faster. And that is essentially, in the beginning of the match, there's an obsession. And as long as you're hitting characters who are not the obsession, you gain tokens. And as you increase those tokens, you increase your attack recovery rate upon a successful hit. That's very important because if you can get this maxed out, when you hit a character and you have it maxed out with eight tokens, your attack recovery is super fast and you can follow up with it. Now, I really like this perk. I personally also use Bamboozle, which is part of Clown, but that is not something that everybody uses. So I would like to talk about, so we just talked about why I leveled these in the way that I did and why I went from clown play ghost face legion and then I went to um, Michael Myers or the shape however we should talk about some of the other ones that other players recommend I'm going to tell you why they recommend them and then I'm going to tell you why I disagree with that so one of the more popular ones is a perk called monitor and abuse from the doctor now with monitor and abuse essentially what it is is that when you're moving around not in a chase it reduces your attack terror radius or your terror radius that means that people the heartbeat that you have on dead by daylight mobile or the sound and dead by daylight pc there's really no heartbeat as the sound gets uh, louder and louder that's how you know that the player or rather the killer is coming for you now, the reason why monitor and abuse, in my opinion, isn't as useful on Dead by Daylight Mobile is for a few reasons. First of all, the, the good killers on PC all have red indicators on mobile. If you use Nurse, there's a red indicator. If you use Huntress, there's a red indicator. Hillbilly, there's a red indicator. All right. Doctor, there's even a red indicator. And uh, I, I'm forgetting wars. one. What, what is that? It's Nurse, Hillbilly, Huntress, Doctor and spirit there we go spirit also has a red indicator unless she's currently using her phase walk so for half of the hunters not literally half the killers there's a red indicator for you all right now because of that a lot more survivors use spine chill because they're so worried about the michael myers they're worried about the ghost face they're worried about the pig all right and those characters can be undetectable so they really prefer using that because a lot of killers don't like having that red indicator pop up at all times so i think monitor and abuse isn't as useful on 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 mobile but some people prefer it another thing that i would like to talk about is hillbilly hillbilly has this great perk where if you get stunned by a pal it reduces the stun by about 40 percent i think that your priority in the beginning should be to slow the game down um i think that really with the whole trying to reduce your pallet stun is it, it'll help you kill the survivor faster theoretically but if you don't have good experience against good survivors you're going to get looped and kited anyways that pallet spun reduction might help you get to them faster but they're going to loop you and kite you and mine you all day mind game you all day that's why this is a perk that i personally feel is better if you can actually get better at mind gaming them and then use it to your advantage instead of not prioritizing slowing the game because if you get looped and you have no ability to slow the game down it's a good game right away so that's why i don't prioritize it that goes for trapper as well with a perk called brutal strength your ability to take down a pallet 10 15 20 percent faster for the same reasons i also still prefer bamboozle but that's only my my bias Another perk I'd like to talk about is the nurse's colon. I think this is actually better than what it used to be, but it used to be better than that. 
kind of weird, right? A nurse's colon is a perk from the nurse where if anyone is healing within 24 to 28 to 20 meters, depending on when you, how high you have it leveled up, you can see them. You can see them on the map. Now, the problem with this is that everybody used to use self-care back in the day. You could heal up really, really fast with self-care. However, self-care got nerfed. So people stopped using self-care and then what they would do is they would rely on other players to heal them well in dead by daylight mobile a lot of players are still catching up to that so some people are just not being healed correctly now so at one point a nurse's colon wasn't as good as what it used to be because not everybody used to have self-care like they used to however now that the generators have so so the toolbox rather has been nerfed and the toolbox used to be used a lot because when you play with randoms, you never know if they're going to decode. So people would at least bring a, a toolbox and that would help them uh, really decode a lot faster. However, the generator, I'm sorry, the toolboxes have recently been nerfed. So there's such little charges that a lot of people don't carry toolboxes like they used to unless they have that red add-on attachment mechanical tool. That means that now more people are using the med kit which means that a nurse's colon is actually having a comeback because people are healing themselves more now than what they did before that sort of nerf. That'll be an interesting development. The reason why I don't recommend trying to get a nurse's colon is because a nurse, the nurse is very, very difficult to level up. I mean, she's very, very difficult. It's not like PC where you're using your radio carpal joint and doing that ulnar radial deviation. You have excellent control. Instead, you're using your thumb and it's a lot harder and it's very difficult to use that, um, that nurse. So trying to level up nurse without all of those other perks, it's going to be very, very difficult, very difficult. So that's why I don't recommend leveling up nurse right away. One last perk, two last perks. You could substitute discordance with surveillance. Surveillance is a nice, uh, sort of a tactic that you can use with the pig, um, where every time you damage a generator or somebody goes back on it, it highlights yellow. So that's why it's called surveillance. So when you're damaging generators, when you see those colors come up, you're like, oh, somebody's over there. In my opinion, it's better uh, late game. What I like about uh, Discordance instead, though, however, is that Discordance will really prevent that anti-gen rush from the beginning of the match. Whereas Surveillance requires you to actually be able to locate and dismantle that generator or to damage it, which to a degree is a lot of luck involved. So that's why I don't prefer Surveillance. And uh, so this is the list that I recommend. Again, Clown, Plague, Ghostface, Legion, and then Michael Myers to help you a little bit with that attack recovery. Because by then, you have already leveled up four uh, hunters or rather killers. And that's going to help you be able to have some experience predicting these survivors. I don't recommend uh, doing these sort of perks that allow you to kill survivors quicker. Uh, again, in the early phases, you're going against bad survivors who are still trying to learn. I shouldn't say bad. They're just trying to learn the maps and stuff, which is perfectly fine. And you're not really going to be able to utilize those perks. Once you face good survivors and know how they play, that's when you can predict them and use those sort of perks better to your advantage. And that is when you're going to be able to kill good survivors is when you become a good hunter. And that unfortunately is not going to happen right away. It's a big learning curve. Remember, that is the limitations to my to my little study there, okay, uh, is that there are some people that will disagree with this, and that's perfectly fine. The world still spins, um, but those that's the list that I would use. By all means, go into the YouTube section. There's definitely going to be some great players there who are posting. See what recommendations they do. I am a rank one killer. I've been a rank one killer for many seasons now, and again, I would go clown, play, ghost face, legion and then i would go michael myers for that ability to really uh recover from that attack and this this build is based on your ability to win but also gain a lot of blood points if you just want to go for kills that's when you can go for different perks such as um make your choice but you won't gain as many blood points because you're killing survivors too fast anyways guys thank you very much for watching this is a little nerve-wracking for me uh, because this is kind of a new style of editing it's not going to be perfect but just bear with me i'll get better at it i actually do this video in one shot i don't do multiple clips over and over and make it all polished and clean i just speak on the top of my head and talk about what needs to be talking or, or spoken about <laughs> anyways guys thank you very much for watching thanks for supporting me and uh thank you very much you all have a beautiful day take care now Bye bye